Namaste. So in this episode, I want to give a general kind of broad definition of qi and qi gong. Now, back in one of our earliest series, Matrix Learning, we went over the method of like super learning or power learning. And the way you get the most out of the material is by carefully defining all the important terms right in the beginning. Otherwise, I mean, you literally don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, I could be talking about qi, qi going, whatever, and other people could be making up their own meanings for the words. And this happens all the time. And that's why people don't understand each other and get into arguments and misunderstandings and so on. So, we begin each series by defining the major terminologies. And then that becomes a standard for the entire series, and we don't change it. And every time we speak, we refer back to those original definitions because that's what determines the field. So, in its broadest, most general meaning, qi simply means energy. There can be universal energy, <clears throat> there can be biological energy, there can be earth energy, water energy, fire energy, so on like this. Because all these things are dhammas, dharmas, things. They're real. Okay, now something like, you know, a paper tiger, like a corporation or, or a currency or a contract or something like this. This is not real. Okay, it doesn't have any chi. It's not sentient, it's not alive. So, you know, some people might argue that the earth isn't sentient, but I would beg to disagree because my experience there is a general sentience, a universal sentience that penetrates everywhere. It's just that it's extremely diffuse and subtle. And to bring yourself in tune to it, you have to drop all the human relativities and dualities and all of that and, and, and just completely surrender to it. But then it's the most blissful, most wonderful thing imaginable, okay? So this is universal chi. The universe is the body of that being whose consciousness we contact in yoga and meditation. So the earth, as part of that being, also shares a certain aspect of the total consciousness, which is earth nature, earth element, or actually earth is a state of matter, solid matter. In physics, there's uh, solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. So these are earth, water, air, and fire in the Chinese system. And all of these have their own kind of chi. Human beings have their own kind of chi, animals have their own kind of chi, and so on. Every sentient being has its own kind of chi. Now, because this is based on uh, the quest for enlightenment and self-improvement and stuff like that, when we use the word chi, we specifically mean human chi. Human chi, and there are even several types of that. There's original chi, which is chi you're born with. Then there's the chi, which is derived from the breath, which the yoga system calls prana. And food, of course. And then exercise, environment, your mental condition. Everything can influence your human chi. So there's some human chi, the original chi is invariable, but the rest can go up and down, can go in and out of balance. No? And this is why we have qigong, is to regulate and build up the strength of this qi so that it can support the arduous process 
of attaining enlightenment. Now the next thing is what is the property of energy in general? How do we know when there's energy happening? Uh, basically, energy displays certain qualities, especially power and strength. It can get work done. That's the actual definition of it in physics. In physics, energy is that which, when applied to mass, uh, makes stuff happen, <laughs> changes things. So this kind of energy is very often seen in living beings. In fact, all the time. Because what are we doing? What am I doing when I lift up this cup and drink from it? I'm changing. <clears throat> I'm changing the cup's position, changing my position, changing how I hold my face. <laughs> so just to do anything requires change. Change requires will. That's not part of chi. Will is yi. You could think of it as similar to the uh, vijnana maya kosha, the intelligence body in the yoga system. So the yi and the chi are certainly related. And the yi can affect the condition of the chi by the decisions that it makes. <clears throat> this in the Buddhist system would be called, of course, sankara. Uh, the plans and decisions, categorizations, definitions, ca uh, you know, putting things in their appropriate box, uh, classification, and so on. This is all done by the intelligence. So if the intelligence is in tune with the laws of the universal chi, then the decisions that it makes will be guided by the interest for the well-being of all life. See, And if a person's intelligence is as misaligned or unaligned with the universal chi, then they do all kinds of nasty stuff, uh, which, whether they intend to or not, always results in the destruction of life. See, And in the Vedas, these are called suras and asuras, huh? demigods and demons. And they're always in conflict. They're always fighting. Uh, so we see this in the world everywhere we look. <clears throat> that in this Kali Yuga especially, the, the nasty people have an edge. And they get away with, you know, the majority of the nasty stuff that they do. But in earlier yugas, it wasn't like that. <laughs> you couldn't get away with that kind of stuff. But anyway, we got what we got and we have to live with it. So the way to live with it is by being strong enough to withstand it. So what we do is we develop the chi through the seven chakras, beginning at the base, sex chakra, energy storage chakra, Dan Tien, movement chakra in the solar plexus, the heart chakra in the chest, uh, the throat chakra, the mental seat, uh, Agnya chakra, and finally the Sahasra, thousand petaled lotus chakra, which is the seat of pure awareness. So all of these are developed through uh, the flow of energy, which is maintained by the lower three chakras. This is why it's so important to develop and balance the chi. The, the quality and quantity of the chi, I would say, is the most important determiner of how far you can go spiritually. Determinant, I think, is the proper word. <laughs> how far you can go spiritually. If you have a lot of energy and you, you can balance it and use it skillfully, then there's nothing stopping you from attaining enlightenment in this very lifetime. So that is another mean and another meaning of chi is qualitative. 
to express the state or strength or um, viability of a given being. Oh, that guy has a lot of yang chi. Oh, uh, she has a lot of yin chi. Huh? Or sometimes it might be the other way around. <laughs> or <clears throat> to observe our own chi and see, is it in balance? Is it out of balance? Is it in balance in one center and out of balance in another? You know, to look at all these questions of how the chi is developed in our own being and then take necessary corrective action. So the sevenfold application of the chi to the business of human life is accomplished through seven vortexes, seven centers, seven chakras or energy vortexes. And these are the anatomy of the subtle body. In most cases, we identify only with the gross body. But if you start practicing Qigong, you're going to start identifying more and more with the energy body, the subtle body, until the point where <laughs> you could care less what happens to the gross body, you know, which is going to happen anyway. You're going to have to give it up. So what then? So the idea is we gain the ability and the skill and the power to live happily in our energy body, then when we have to let this gross body go, it's not an issue. It's not a big deal. It's just the fruit falling from the tree, you know, it's not a big deal. It's time and it happens. <laughs> Boom, it hits Newton on the head and he invents the law of gravity. Okay, so that's qi. What about gong? In, in China, the word gong really means like any kind of work. Huh? Any kind of work that requires strength, skill, talent, uh, persistence, maybe even a rescuing from a, uh, a breakdown, troubleshooting, you know, stuff like that. Work. <laughs> So, for example, uh, Kung Fu. Kung Fu means a long time. Fu means long time. Huh? So anything which is not only work, but takes a long time to accomplish, is Kung Fu. Huh? And just incidentally, um, the person, the philosopher, whose name is anglicized as Confucius, his real name is Kung Fu Sha, which means <laughs> the king of the long time work. Uh, so he was a great master, really, really great master, grand master, master of so many masters. Uh, and his theory of karma, which is worked out in the form of these qi diagrams called the I Ching, or Yi King is also a great source of, of wisdom and divination and all kinds of good stuff. Uh, you should study it. I studied it for many years. <laughs> I lived by it. I still do. So the Yi Ching is showing <clears throat> the energy state, whether yin or yang or changing, the energy state of the six chakras. So. Now we can say, with our, our third definition of qi as being the state of the qi, we can say, oh, the qi in that chakra is yin, or it's yang, or it's changing. You see? And now we have a much better grasp of the situation in the chakra system. We have a whole language now to talk about the chakras where we didn't before. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> so... <laughs> So finally, Qigong then is any study or training having to do with Qi, which is a skill that's developed over a long time with persistence and uh, guidance of wisdom from superior intellects, higher realized beings, and so like that. So Qigong is really a nice thing, you know. And, of course, 
it is not separate from the rest of the noble path. Uh, let's make that clear right in the beginning. This is an integral part of Chinese Buddhism, which was brought from India by a Buddhist monk, not an ordinary monk, a patriarch, meaning he was like the Pope of his uh, lineage at that time. And he was the one who introduced these principles into China. Huh? Maybe they were then lost in India, especially when the Kshatriya lineages, uh, you know, the kings were taken out for the prepare for democracy and all that. All those aspects of Kshatriya culture, Raja culture, uh, got dismantled and lost. There was nobody to pay for them anymore. So the knowledge went to China, where it sat for 1,400 years. So now it has to come back from China and reconnect with the original uh, Noble Eightfold Path, the yoga system, and all that other good stuff that we've been going over here for, golly, almost nine years now. So we're going to keep this up. I'm traveling for a few days. I'm going to be real busy. I may or may not get to do more episodes until I get back. So uh, if you join our private group, you get access to all the original texts and also the uh, direct uh, the ability to contact me or any of our other group members directly for clarification or discussion of any questions. So. If you want, would like to do that, drop me an email. Om Tatsa Buddha Sharanai.